Hi, I'm Lee Harris from Emoji Trading and this is the second video in our order flow training series. In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of delta, the difference between buying and selling power, and we'll explain what you can understand from this difference in each bar, between bars, relative to price, and at each price level. In our first video, we used Sierra Chart to build a numbers bar chart to display the number of contracts that traded at the bid price and at the ask price for each price level. And underneath the main chart, we used the Sierra Chart Numbers Bars Calculated Values Study to show a summary of the total volume that traded for each bar and the delta for each bar, the difference between the buying and the selling that occurred within each bar. Delta is a key concept to understand when we're making trading decisions that are based upon the traded volume. It's the difference between the volume that traded at the offer price and the volume that traded at the bid price. In other words, if delta is greater than zero, we had more buying than selling, and if delta is less than zero, we had more selling than buying. We can consider delta for each bar on a chart, as well as at each price level within a bar. We're going to consider both of these concepts in this video, and we'll demonstrate how various emoji indicators can bring these concepts to life to support your trading decisions. Let's begin by looking at what we can understand from each bar's delta and also by comparing delta on a bar-to-bar -bar basis. Sierra Chart has several standard built-in studies that let you view bar delta. You can use the Numbers Bars Calculated Values study to add a table of values below the main chart region. Here we can see the bar's delta, the bar's maximum delta and minimum delta. You can also add Ask Bid Volume Difference Bars to a chart. This gives us a graphical view of the open, high, low and closing delta values for each price bar. The reason that delta is so important is that we want to understand the relationship of delta, or in other words, buying or selling power, against price. Let's imagine a price bar reached the high for the day, but delta was actually negative, and the bar closed lower than it opened. In simple terms, we could describe this as price made a new high, the bar closed lower, and the bar demonstrated more selling than buying. Without looking at a chart, if you heard this and you were asked to make a trading decision, would you be more inclined to go long or to go short? Here's what this scenario looks like using Sierra Chart's built-in Ask Bid Volume Difference Bars, and you can see the delta. And here's what this scenario looks like using Sierra Chart's Numbers Bars Calculated Values Study. Although delta's important, I believe it's something that has to be assessed at a glance, and for me, the Ask Bid Volume Difference Bars provide too much information to interpret really quickly. Likewise, the Numbers Bars Calculated Values are great, but I'd prefer a coloured background to the numbers rather than the numbers themselves being coloured, so that at a quick glance I can see whether delta is positive or negative. So let's introduce the Emoji Order Flow Suite Delta Snapshot Indicator. We can use this in several different ways. First, let's apply the indicator to a new chart region, and we'll set the draw style for delta to be fill rectangle to zero, with auto colouring, based upon positive and negative values. What I've now got is a simple histogram below the main price chart that allows me to quickly see whether delta is positive or negative. I can also easily see the relative level of delta between bars. We'll come back to that in a minute. You can achieve something similar with Sierra Chart's Ask Bid Volume Difference Bars by changing the graph draw style to candlestick body only, but Delta Snapshot has a few other things to offer. We can also present delta directly on the main price chart. If I select text as the draw style for the delta subgraph, and I set the chart region to 1 for the indicator, now we see a coloured box drawn against each price bar. The colour represents the delta, as does the position of the box. Positive delta is shown by having the box underneath the price bar, implying upwards buying pressure. Negative delta is indicated with the box above the bar, indicating downward selling pressure. The numbers in the coloured box show us how many selling and buying imbalances there are in the bar. 
we'll be covering imbalances in our next video. So Delta Snapshot is a great at-a-glance indicator that can give you more information without taking up excessive space on the chart. Now let's go back to the scenario we described earlier where price made a new high for the day but the bar closed lower and delta was negative, or in other words, there was more selling than the buying. This sounds pretty bearish. It's a situation we call delta divergence. Although price traded higher, this higher price was not supported by delta, and this can be a good early warning signal that a trend may be losing strength. The delta snapshot indicator allows this situation to be highlighted within the text display mode by colouring the Delta snapshot box a different colour. We also have a specific emoji indicator just for Delta Divergence that will highlight these Delta Divergence situations. To make these situations really unmissable, how about setting the indicator draw style to text, making it bright pink, and actually display the word divergence. We can also set up an alert for a delta divergence condition. Within this study, the delta divergence condition subgraph will evaluate to minus one for a bearish delta divergence or plus one for a bullish delta divergence. So we can enter a simple formula into the study alerts tab and then Sierra chart will alert us when we have a delta divergence situation. Now for me, a simple histogram of delta below the price chart gives a really quick and clear way to assess delta that I find easier to read than the built-in ask bid volume difference candlesticks. What the candlesticks do tell us though is where delta closed relative to its range while the bar was forming. Let's imagine a price bar had a maximum value of delta of 300. In other words there were 300 more contracts bought than sold. And a minimum value of delta of minus 50. In other words, there were 50 more contracts sold than bought. We could gain some insight as to the relative buying or selling power by understanding the value of delta when the bar closed. If the bar closed with a value of delta of 290 compared to the maximum of 300, we'd feel much more bullish about the bar than if it closed with a value of delta of minus 20. We can see this with Sierra Chart's Ask Bid Volume Difference bars but the graphical display of this study provides a lot of information to assess quickly. What we really want to know is that for any given bar, did delta close near to its highest or lowest value? The emoji delta strength indicator can tell us that quickly and easily. What we do is set a threshold for delta as a percentage of the final value of delta. Here I'm using 98%. And for those bars where the final value of delta was at or above this threshold, we highlight them with an indicator showing the delta strength. As you'd expect, when we're trending strongly, we have delta strength. Towards the end of a move, we're less likely to see strong delta as we run out of buyers or sellers, and we start to experience exhaustion. We'll cover other signs of exhaustion in video number five, including different ways to identify it based upon the traded volume within the bar. So now we've reviewed Delta Snapshot, Delta Divergence, and Delta Strength. All of these indicators look at the delta within a single bar, and we can get good information from this. Now let's explore the relationship of the current bar's delta compared to the value of delta in the previous bars. Here, you can see that price has continued to make new highs, but delta is decreasing. We wouldn't class the latest bar as a delta divergence because delta is still positive but it's pretty clear that the buying pressure is falling. Let's think about this in normal language. If I say to you that price is going higher, but the number of buyers is falling, do you really feel like buying? We know from basic economics that as price rises, demand falls, and this is exactly what we're seeing. If we have falling demand, we don't expect price to continue to rise. So if we're in a long position, we position, could consider taking We certainly wouldn't be thinking about entering a long trade. So we want to be aware that demand is falling, and then we can consider what may happen. Notice this sequence of falling deltas. 
we can highlight this using the delta sequence subgraph, which is actually part of delta snapshot. This subgraph looks for a sequence of falling delta when delta is positive, or a sequence of rising delta when delta is negative. With familiarity looking at charts, you see this automatically, but there's no harm in having your computer make it really obvious. Let's set the delta sequence subgraph to arrow right and make it orange. I'm also adding an alert. Now we can see a large orange arrow when delta's strength is reducing, and Sierra chart will give us an audio alert at the same time. Another indicator that considers the value of delta in the current bar relative to the previous bar is delta scalper. Delta scalper highlights when the price movement is supported by a large change in delta. In other words, price is rising accompanied by strong buying, or price is falling with strong selling pressure. What we're doing here is having the indicator display when we have a 400% increase or decrease in delta between the current bar compared to the previous bar. This indicator, like most of the emoji indicators, will signal in real time during bar formation. Delta Scalper highlights the range of prices through which the change in delta occurred. In other words, at which price levels did the buyers or sellers actively come into the market with strong pressure? It gives us a way of showing when the buying or selling pressure dramatically increased. By extension, the range of prices through which this increase occurred are likely to form support or resistance if they're retested, as the buyers or sellers that entered will look to protect their position. Likewise, if these levels fail when retested, it's likely that what was support will become resistance and vice versa, as the buyers or sellers that caused the rapid change in delta cover their now losing positions. So Delta Scalper considers the percentage change between bars, and we can actually see this percentage change numerically by using the Delta Change Indicator, which will display a numeric value above or below the bar based upon the change in delta between the prior and the current bar. So now we've defined delta, and we've considered what we can see when we look at the delta of a price bar the relationship between price and delta, and also the relationship of delta between different price bars. Now let's think about what delta can mean for the individual prices that have traded within a price bar. We can visualize this in different ways in Sierra chart. Let's begin by taking a numbers bars chart, and we'll change the text display from bid and ask volume to ask bid volume difference, or in other words, delta. What we now have is a numbers bar which is showing us the relative buying and selling power that occurred at each price level. For example, when 2461.5 was the ask price, 174 contracts were purchased, but when it was the bid price, 65 contracts were sold. If we subtract 65 from 174, that equals 109, so we can see the delta value at this price level was 109. We can bring this to life a little bit more by changing the background of the numbers bars to draw a profile of these values and also colouring the background according to whether buying or selling was dominant. By using the ask bid volume split profile type, we can start to see the highs and lows within the bar and on which side of the trade they occurred. As you can see, we've got a lot of information now on the chart. The key is identifying what's important. So let's examine a few standout points and we'll concentrate on the maximum and the minimum delta values within the bar. In other words, the prices where the most buying and the most selling occurred. We can ask Sierra chart to highlight the maximum and minimum values in each column within the numbers bar settings. If we look at the 859 price bar, we can see that at 2462 and a quarter, we had the maximum value of delta within the bar one tick off the high price of the bar. So what we had was the highest amount of buying near the top of the bar, yet price did not continue higher. What this tells us is that there was a large passive seller who was absorbing all of this buying activity. 
Our challenge as traders is how we can quickly identify these conditions amongst all the other information that's held on the chart. We can highlight the situation where the highest amount of buying or selling occurred at the wrong end of the bar by using the emoji absorption at extreme indicator. What this indicator does is highlight when maximum delta is at the extreme of a higher priced bar, but the buying is being absorbed, or when minimum delta, or in other words, maximum selling, is at the bottom of a lower priced bar, but all of this selling is being absorbed. And this gives us a good indication of the presence of a large passive buyer or seller who has the ability to at least stop the most recent price movement or even potentially reverse it. We'll go into more detail on absorption within video 4. So absorption as extreme shows us when all of the buying or selling at the extreme of a bar is being absorbed, but let's revisit the chart highlighting the maximum and minimum delta values. You can see how some prices consistently exhibit maximum and minimum delta. When we look at charts, it can be hard sometimes to look horizontally for consistency at price levels. We tend to focus on highs and lows. But as you can see here, 2459.50 has consistently had the minimum delta value across a series of bars. We can highlight this much more easily by using the emoji absorption sequence indicator. This indicator looks back across a number of bars and will highlight when the maximum or minimum delta has occurred at the same price within those bars. It highlights this in each bar where it occurred and this really makes the situation stand out. What we're doing is detaching your choice of bar type and bar period from the market. If you were trading what you see here using a 30 minute chart, you'd be seeing the absorption price level 2459.50 being revisited but remaining unbroken. If you were trading on a faster chart, you'd see a lot of bars forming with the same price level representing support. Now the market doesn't care what type of chart you're looking at or on what time frame. The trader who's looking to buy 10,000 contracts at a certain price only cares about filling this order. And the emoji absorption sequence indicator flags this to you regardless of your chart type. As we compare Sierra Chart's standard maximum and minimum delta highlighting to the absorption sequence and absorption at extreme indicators, you can start to see how the emoji indicators bring what's happening to life away from the rest of the noise that's occurring within the market so that you can make better informed trading decisions. So now we've introduced delta, a numeric indication of buying or selling power that's calculated as the difference between the volume bought and the volume sold and we've shown its importance on a single bar, relative to price, between bars, by assessing its relative strength, and within a bar as a way to identify absorption. We'll go into absorption in more detail in video 4, which will also look at reading the market's reaction to traded volume. The emoji indicators we've used to highlight these concepts have been delta snapshot, delta divergence, delta strength, Delta Sequence, Delta Scalper, Absorption as Extreme, and Absorption Sequence. You can learn more about these indicators and the rest of our trading tools at www.emojitrading.com. We hope you found this video useful. In our next video, we're going to cover how we identify powerful buying or selling activity by reading the trades that have been initiated by aggressive traders. See you then.